Hey. Hello. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And yourself? I am doing great. Thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> hey, we're let right? a few people log on, and then we're yes, gonna... yes, yes. I'm looking at oh. look, looking at my hair. <laughs> great. How was your day today? Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy busy. How was your day? It was. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Had a lot going on today, but it's all good. <laughs> my mom just logged on, my mom and dad. So. Hey, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Hey, Danielle. Hey, Hope. I see a few people. That For I know. everybody who just tuned in, this is Quarantine Sessions. I am with the lovely singer, dancer, songwriter. Oh, so sweet. Choreographer. Ishi, thanks for joining hey, me. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited and I'm just honored that you asked me to be on your show and everything. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, what was Ishi in the middle of or what was she doing uh, when you were told you had to quarantine? Ooh, Lord, a whole bunch of stuff. So I do a lot of artist development. So I was doing artist development. I was teaching dance. I uh, my daughter models. She was in the middle of doing fashion shows and all kinds of stuff. So we say pretty busy all the time. So just constantly doing that um, music stuff, you know. Uh, uh, I manage an artist named Bobby. So managing her, managing my daughter, just that. I'm a single mom. My daughter has been homeschooled since she was a baby. So homeschooling, all of that. So yeah, it was a lot going on when we we're told we had to stay inside, but you know, we're making it happen. How has it affected your day-to-day -day activities so far? Well, um, you know, I work for myself, so just that grind. I'm used to being around people. I'm an extrovert, so being around people, you know, connecting with people, teaching dance, and you know, just all of that. I work with a lot of youth and that right there has been a little difficult for me because I love to touch people and get involved and all that. So having to do everything like virtually now has been quite interesting. But we're making it work, you know what I mean? And it's, it's been some days where it's been challenging, you know. Um, I love being outside and everything. So we've been going for walks and stuff like that, exercising. But just that part, it's been beautiful on one end of the spectrum, but really, really, really challenging on the other end, <laughs> you know? So all the creatives know what I mean. Have you uh, learned anything new about yourself since you've been quarantined in? Oh, yes, that I need to relax more because I'm <laughs> always like going, going, going. I, I, I'm a workaholic. So um, just learning to relax more and chill out and just really enjoy the present you know being in the present and the moment and all that kind of stuff so yeah definitely that learning to just woosah. <laughs> you're in atlanta right now yeah uh -huh. i'm uh, from atlanta born and raised are um are things loosening up out that way yeah i mean when you say loosening up what do you mean are you guys able to, uh, are restaurants opening, things slowly getting back to normal? Yeah, they, they actually started opening things, um, what, about two weeks ago, something like that? Yeah, so, I mean, but for me and my house, we're still quarantined. We go out only when necessary, when we need to. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, definitely things are opening up, you know, yeah. But I'm still trying to work through some things, so I was like, maybe June. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We should get back out there. <laughs> um, are you making any preparations just in case this thing comes back later on this year? Yeah, I mean, always, you know, especially like who knew this was coming? This came out of nowhere. So um, I'm definitely, you know, preparing for the future and just, you know, getting used to kind of this new normal, you know what I mean? So I've been doing some amazing uh, artist development with some artists, uh, one by the name of Faith, a guy named, N N uh, a guy named Nalaj. Look at my, I'm getting my tongue twisted. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, my artist, Bobby. I've been doing a lot of that. Um, I've been teaching some dance classes, going to be doing some private dance classes. So yeah, you know, just doing that. And then my daughter, 
you know, helping her with her vision, with her modeling and everything. So we stay, we stay busy even in quarantine. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, let's get into a little bit of your history. You said you were born and raised in Atlanta. Can you take yep. us back uh, to maybe a day in the life of Ishii growing up uh, in Atlanta? Oh, my gosh. So uh, born and raised in Atlanta. My mother was one of the very first uh, black dance schools here in Atlanta. So I grew up dancing all my life. I was two years old when I started dancing. Um, the dance school was called the Gaither School of Dance. And my mom started this back in the 60s. So that's pretty much all I've ever known. Like just dance, 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 Saturday morning, sometimes during the week. Um, so yeah, just a lot of culture just around that. Uh, my mother was, um, she went to Spelman and she was, and my dad went to Morehouse. So she was very like into just culture and, you know, learning about where you come from and, and dance was just a passion of hers and she loved working with kids. So I used to just be in awe watching her teach and how she would choreograph all these dances by herself. And then she, she had an assistant at one point, but I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I just wanted to be like my mom. I just really I just admired her and just her passion for dance and for giving back and for helping people. She was just a lovely human being. So yeah, I mean, that's, that was, I mean, even now people see me that you have known me all my life and they're like you still dancing because <laughs> i dance all the time that's all i did <laughs> <laughs> i love dancing very active in school um i was a cheerleader i was on the high step team i was over this club that club you know just very 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 active it used to be super shy though actually when i was young and um i think when i was about 12 or 13 i said i don't want to be shy anymore and i made that kind of turn around and that's, I, t I actually joined the rest of development when I was 13 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were in college and I was 13. Yep. Wow. Yep. So speech and headliner were at the Arts Institute of Atlanta and they're the founding members of Arrested Development. And my sister actually got the uh, opportunity to do the audition, but she didn't want to do it. Um, I, I'm the baby. I have a brother and a sister. My sister, had, I, she had been dancing for James Brown and Pebbles and a whole bunch of people. And then she was an artist herself. And a gentleman by the name of Ian Burke. I don't know if you've ever heard of Ian Burke, but anybody in Atlanta who was out in the 90s, 80s, he had something to do with it, okay? And so Ian was actually, um, I think, managing Arrested Development at the time and just kind of helping him navigate through the industry. And yeah, they took me to the audition. And I, I remember what I had on and everything. And I auditioned for a speech and headliner. Well, can you take us back to that audition? Oh, yeah. So Kwame was real big at the time. So I had on this uh, yellow and white uh, <laughs> polka dot turtle neck. <laughs> and I had on the, my hammer pants, my black hammer pants. I had on some pan leather shoes with big bows. <laughs> and I, and I, had a, I had a little short, little cut hair, hairstyle. And I went and I auditioned, I danced, I did African dance and just, just dance like in Atlanta style. Uh, Yeek was really big back then. And they liked me. I think Speech thought I was a little too young, but he liked my energy. So yeah, and that was, that was it. I was 13, they were in college. So what did mom uh, think about this, uh, joining the group at such an early age? Well, she was the one who actually, um, you know, pushed it and everything because my mother was a woman of the arts. So she also was an educator for many years. So, but she understood like my mother, um, just kind of give you a history. She um, went and, and uh, auditioned for the Nutcracker back in, back in the day, like the sixties and stuff. And she made it all the way to the end. But of course, because she was African-American, they were like, well, we don't have a costume to fit you, you know? <laughs> and my mom was very, very fair skin, had very long hair. So she, kind of meet you know the bill at that time if you understand what i'm saying but right. she never got a chance to go further in her career because you know during that time so many different stipulations and then she got married and had kids so it was kind of like me carrying the torch and going to that next place you know what i'm saying and right. so she was like hey if this is what you want to do i love dancing um i actually either want to dance for alvin ailey or be an attorney and then this opportunity came and kind of, I feel like, you know, that definitely changed the trajectory of my life. You know what I mean? Because I just love to dance. So I was like, I can dance? Okay. And so my mom was all for it and she really supported it. And I would 
go to school. I remember going to school, I would get up at seven, have to be there around eight ish or whatever, eight, eight thirty, and I would stay all day. I was in the band, I did a whole bunch of stuff, then I would come home, do my schoolwork, then I would sometimes have to rehearse with the group to like two in the morning or whatever, because they were in college, so it was kind of like different, you know. Then I had to get back up and do it all over again. So yeah, it was crazy. And could so when we came out, I was 16 years old. Could you see the vision early on? You know, um, I could, but I didn't honestly know where we were going with it. I just, I just liked to dance. So that was it for me. It was like, I could dance and I could get on the stage dance. I'm cool. <laughs> so that's all I really, honestly, that was it for me. But um, when I was 16, we shot the video for Tennessee. It was in uh, November or December, and I remember because it was super cold. And then we came out the next year, and I was a senior in high school that, that year. Yeah. So take me back to uh, Tennessee. Uh, did you know it was going to take off when it did? Um, actually, I think Tennessee was one of the last songs that was recorded. Um, I, you know, honestly, I was so young. I was just in it you know what I mean like I said it was just cool being with folks that were like different you know and different from what we were seeing musically at the time and me, be, me being from Atlanta you know a lot of bass music and all that was like huge at the time and so and I still love that but it was just different you know just a different vibe and a different energy and we had a synergy and I was like okay I want to be a part of this you know what I mean and it just hey it took off you know it just I mean, of course, I don't think any of us thought it would be like huge like it was. I mean, we were a buzz clip on MTV, if anybody remembers that. Absolutely. <laughs> and so um, when it became a buzz clip, that's when it kind of blew up. And college radio actually played us a whole, whole lot. They were kind of the first to embrace us, if you will. You know what I mean? And so a lot of the larger uh, radio stations, major radio stations, if you will, they didn't really embrace us until after we won the Grammys and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So after the album takes off, how did life change for you? Uh, it was like I went to sleep and then I woke up and we were famous. <laughs> That's how it went. Like literally, it was like we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. You know, going to the grocery store, people would know you. It was just different. It was like, and I wasn't really used to that. It was kind of strange. And then traveling a the whole lot. Hey, big bug. <laughs> and uh, traveling a whole lot around the world. And, you know, it was it was it was interesting because I remember going to Rome for the first time. And I was like, wow, they lied to us in the in these history books. <laughs> and so just traveling around the world, um, because I ended up leaving school early and just did like homeschool to tour with the group and everything. Because again, everybody else was grown. So I was the kid of the bunch. And it was like, you know, we're getting ready to go on the Chitlin Circuit Tour. And my mother, she was just like, hey, you only get these opportunities once in your lifetime. She said, you can always go to school. And again, she was an educator, but she also knew that that was my passion. And that, and I'm still doing it to today. You know, till this day, I'm still dancing. So, and, and in the arts. So she was like, hey, go take this opportunity because it may not be, be here you know, again. Right. You guys ended up winning, uh, I think, two Grammys for that album? Yes. Can you take us back to what that experience was like? It was amazing. Hey, Nikki. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, it was like, well, first of all, we didn't think we were going to win. Okay. And um, I honestly thought uh, Billy Ray Cyrus was going to win because he had that song, uh, Achy Breaky Heart. Yeah. And so when they called our names, we were like, what? You know? <laughs> and so then we went out and it was it was it was amazing and just to look out into the audience and see all the people you you admire or you've grown up listening to you like oh my gosh all these people in the, in the audience and it's it's surreal it's surreal and then I when I started kind of researching I was like you know most people most artists don't get a Grammy on their first time out you yeah. know what I mean and then we got two it was right. crazy <laughs> right. so yeah it was crazy um, after the album does its thing, um, what was the game plan going into, going into the sophomore album? Oh, you know, we were going through some things at that time, you know, a lot of I internal turmoil. So it was kind of like, um, didn't, you know, it was just, we didn't know. <laughs> and it was kind of like, 
you know, Speech Within the Studio did, did the music and we came in and did our parts. And it was so many moving components because at this time we were like famous. So then you have the pressure of that first album having to repeat that again. And then it's just like the music industry and the scene was kind of changing and moving in a different direction. So it's kind of like, how do you navigate those waters? And I remember we did our video for United Front in South Africa. So we were actually the first hip hop group to actually do a video in Africa that was American. You get what wow. I mean? And right. so we did that back in, that was like 93, I think, or something, or early 94. And Antoine, uh, Antoine Fuqua was the director. And so, and then we did the other part of it in Brooklyn, I think. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And I think, um, I don't know, you know, the energy, like I said, this had changed, shifted, you know. Um, I, I do believe due to success and just, you know, us being immature, you know, in some areas um, from business as well as just on a personal level. And it just, you know, the vibration changed. And so I feel like when the frequency changed, that's, that's kind of why things kind of went south, if you will. <laughs> okay. But the good thing about uh, the second album is I, um, I got a chance to be on the cover. And yeah, I was, was gonna ask. Cool. I was gonna ask yeah. you about that. How did that happen, and whose uh, decision was that? Um, I think it was both speech and headliner's decision. Um, and they just told me, "Well, we're gonna just put Ishii on the cover." And I was like, "Well, okay." And it was cool for me because I had been in the group since I was thirteen, and in the beginning, it was just speech, headliner, and myself for a while, and then other people would kind of come in and out until we actually got a solid foundation of the people. Raza Don, Tariq, Baba OJ, you know, and it was just, it was that. And Dion Ferris actually just sang on the album, which it was other people who sang Paulette. It was a lot of different people that were on the record as guest vocalists. So a lot of people always thought Dion was a part of the group, but she wasn't. Um, but yeah, and shout out to everybody. I love everybody. But um, yeah, during that shoot, I uh, did a shoot in Miami. And I had to hold that position, boom, like that for a long time. Birds were flying over my head and pooping. And <laughs> exactly, that's it, that's it. I held that position forever. And it, it was really, and they just put a, little, a, a beautiful necklace, African necklace over my boobies. <laughs> and I was like, oh, afraid to move because I didn't want anything to shift and show. So yeah, it was, it was a great experience. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. Did that, did that take you personally to another level? Because you're the uh, only one on the uh, album cover. And, and uh, did more people recognize you from that? Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. People really don't, a lot of people don't per se know my name. But they would be like, that girl with the bald head, <laughs> the dancing girl. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, people notice me more going out. And even now today, I get stopped when I go to the cash farmer's market. It's a really huge market. And, you know, people just look at me sometimes. People follow me down the aisles. And they're like, are you the girl from the rest of the film? I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was, it was a cool experience. I never, you know, thought I'd be on the cover of an album. So that was nice. <laughs> You guys uh, had a lot of uh, success, um, and you did a lot of big uh, events. Uh, if I uh, take you back to a few of them, can you tell me your best memory? Okay, so I'll try. <laughs> Arsenio Hall Show. Oh, my God. So Arsenio Hall Show was the bomb. It was amazing. That was our first, I want to say, I think our first like major, major TV show that we were on. And I remember he, he gave all his, he would give all his guests a big, huge box, and in the box, it was this beautiful robe with the Arsenio Hall logo on the back. I still have my robe. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I still have it. So, yeah, and, and he was just super cool and welcoming and inviting to us and just nice, you know what I mean? So that was, that was the bomb show, like, for real. <laughs> David Letterman. David Letterman, he was funny. Oh, my God. You know what? That place is so cold is he right? loved it to be like i'm talking about ice cold like you know you have to put it on a, several coats and i was in there with a little bra top <laughs> <and> a <rat. laughs> 
freezing. But yeah, no, David Letterman was super cool. It was just super cold. I mean, like freezing cold. That I, that's what I remember about David Letterman. <laughs> what about Saturday Night Live? So Saturday Night Live was interesting because with Saturday Night Live, I don't know what they do now, how they do it now, but we take two shows in one night. So you have the first show, you have an audience, and I, you do the whole show, and they do their skits and everything. And I think what they do is test the audience to see what works and what doesn't work. So when the second airing is what everybody sees on TV, they've worked out the kinks. So we had to perform twice, and that was interesting to me because I never knew that they did that. So it was, it was quite interesting. But, like, it was a lot of work, too. A lot of work. I loved it. You guys ended up winning Best Rap Video and Best Rap Single at the MTV Music Awards. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I do. It was, um, what year was that? Oh, my gosh. Let me see. <laughs> Might have been uh, 93. 93. So uh, was, was that the year, was Snoop and Dre out back then? Uh, Dre had the chronic Snoop just dropped right. Okay, so I remember a, a few few things that night. Um, so give us Shaquille, the goods. Give huh? us the goods. Give us so, the goods. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal was somewhere biased, and I remember walking past him, and I was like, "This dude is a is a giant. He's massive." My head was like at his crotch. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so that was, that freaked me out because he was standing up and I walked past him. I was like, God, he's big. But I remember that night um, we we won and I think Snoop had just come out. So he kind of was like, I think he was in a category with us or somebody was in a category. With, I can't remember, but I, I do remember he was disappointed about not winning. But I was like, well, you know how this industry goes. I said, you'll win next year. <laughs> you probably did. I mean? <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. What do you remember most about uh, the 94 Woodstock? Oh, that was crazy. So, people, like a sea of people. And, I mean, it was like in this field somewhere in New York, I think. We had to take a helicopter over to the stage. Um, it was hot. It was super hot. <laughs> and... Um, I remember our sound got messed up. So that was kind of a weird show because we were hearing all kinds of sounds and noises coming from different places. And um, I remember, uh, I forget the guy, um, what's the guy who was really big? I can't think his name, but he joked about us on his radio show the next day. So Howard Stern? Howard Stern, yes. <laughs> he called, he, yeah, he said a lot of stuff. <laughs> So yeah, but but uh, it was it was it was a cool experience because just recreating, well, attempting to recreate the original Woodstock. I still actually have my can from the '94 Woodstock. Nice. It's, it was a collector's item, so I still have it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I try to keep stuff. I try. Hey, Kira. <laughs> I try to keep stuff. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So after all this success and two albums. Where is Arrested Development at this time? And to today? No, uh, after 94. I think. Oh my gosh, we were, we, the group disbanded. Um, you know, everybody kind of went their separate ways, but I have always been the one that's always, come on everybody, let's get back together. <laughs> so if I would, you know, I had my moments where I was upset about a lot of things and, you know, they were true feelings at the time. Um, and, you know, but I always felt like that the group was always bigger and the music was bigger than, you know, individuals. So I would always say, let's come back together. Let's do music. Let's do this. Let's do that. So but we definitely went through our ups and downs for sure. <laughs> so, yeah.